want to see 10 more acts selected to compete against the best in the world. Howie, you have the golden buzzer tonight. The act you pick will skip the semis and go straight into the final. Audience voters will also be having a say tonight. Their votes will put five acts into the next round. Thank you. Thank you. They're really good. I mean, yes. Here are the Ramadani brothers, and I mean, I'm already so excited because you can see already, everyone is so excited yeah. to see you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. I wish you good luck. Yeah. Okay, can we just talk about this contraption? Look at this contraption. Is this your mentoring? Yes. On judgment day, I won't fade away. I'll be pushing on till my dying day. I won't give it all away. I'll be pushing on till the rivers run dry. I'm about to try, try, try. That's one leg.
Ja. That was not what we were allowed to. Not your mother. I mean, you are incredible. The best. The best Thank of you. the best. Thank you. Now, why would you do that? Like, you are unbelievable. There's no, there's not enough words. There's not enough words. Honestly. Thank you. Simon. For me, I like to feel that we're judging this show based on what we've seen each act do before. And I thought there must be a ceiling. And you've just broken through the ceiling. I still think you can do better. What? What? I'm going to be honest. I think you what? can do better. Howie! You can. No, they're amazing. Hey! 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 You can do better. You can do better. Howie! You can do so much better. <laughs> with, with, oh my God. with the right, with the right. Taken the Ramadani brothers from Heidi's dream team. What do you want to say, Howie? You'll never have to wear lame pants again. <laughs> I am so excited for this performance that you're about to do. Thank you, Mel. But your voice is just incredible. But the story is what gets me. Like, it makes me fall in love with you even more. My entire life, I've struggled with self-acceptance. I've always had a passion for music and performing, but I hated the way that I look. This whole concept of the mask happened. I would masquerade my face, but I'd still be able to love what I do. What if could be America's Got Talent was the first time that I really felt validated. They just said they loved me. They loved my voice. Then live shows came and it kind of just crumbled a little bit. I had to perform from Australia, which was so hard. Going into the semi-finals, Christina Ray! It was so heartbreaking. I think because I was on such a roll. I felt like I was finding myself through this show and it just kind of just halted. Who is your next draft pick, Mel? I'm going with the emotion. Oh, I like this guy. Yes, Sheldon Riley. That's wow. One. That's a good one. He's really yes, good. He is. Oh my gosh, he looks so, so good. Happy oh, so happy for me. You. AGT completely changed my life. I was a grand finalist at the Eurovision Song Contest. I've appeared in Vogue, Rolling Stone, Billboard. And that's kind of why I wanted to come back as well. I think the whole world has seen me in these masks for years and years. Are you saying you, you want to I don't know. Well, this is what I want your help with, because I'm just like... I'd love to see your face. So if you feel like you want to maybe take it off halfway through <laughs> or at the end. Fuck. Either way, I'm going to be excited to hear your voice. I'm glad you're anyway, excited. I'm nervous yes. as hell. <laughs> no, don't be nervous. I chose him because I think people will really identify with his struggles and what he's been through. I hope he takes his mask off. I've just spent so much time trying to visually be enough for people that maybe the talent that I have is enough.
maybe we both know this is not a time it's time to say goodbye violence playing and the angels crying when the stars are So good. <laughs> so it good. Did. Yes. So good. I have to say, oh, you're gorgeous, by you the way. Are. I just you are. You are gorgeous. And I'm not just saying that. Hi, Dave. You do look gorgeous, and you did Thank a very you, beautiful rendition with that song. I mean, you nailed it. You belted out. I loved it. Thank well you. Well done. Thank you, Heidi. I'm blown away. Howie. Yeah, I am blown away. I got to tell you, my soapbox in life is mental health. And the biggest hurdles that we have in life are the hurdles that we have yeah. inside ourselves. <laughs> Not only did you step it up from anything you've ever done on AGT before, but I think you did something wonderful for the world. Yeah. You really did. Yeah. Thank you. I always felt with Sheldon, this was unfinished business. Mm -hmm. And your voice is so distinct. And you are a proper, what I would call, front man singer, you Thank know? You. So congratulations and welcome back. Thank you so much. Howdy, y'all. Howdy. The writing's on the wall. <laughs> Howie's dream team. That's it. That's it. Drake, you're probably one of the most successful acts in AGT history. And the songs that you played on the stage went to number one. Am Absolutely. I correct? You are correct, and you called it. I know I called it. <laughs> and that's why I called you to be on the dream team. When I was about seven, I discovered who Elvis was. And immediately, I really fell in love with music. And that's when I decided this is what I want to do. I never had a reason, girl, to go around looking for a fire to walk through. That's an original, right? Uh, yes, sir, it is. I think that song's a hit. I think you're going to break out from this particular moment. Yeah, actually, Howie turned out to be right. The next day, it was number one on iTunes, and my world just absolutely changed. You're on the line to beat. I remember thinking, oh my gosh, I, I could win this thing. Finishing in third place, Drake Milligan. I was a little disappointed. There's maybe a little part of me that wonders what would have happened if I would have won. But since AGT, I've gotten to live out a lot of my dreams. Yeah, I got to release my debut album, and I've gotten to play it all over the world. Uh, when I got the call for Fantasy League, and to know that America wanted me to have another chance, that's everything to me. Every song you sang on our show went to number one, but you came in third on AGT. You learn from that, and you go, okay, what can I do better? 
Being on America's Got Talent, I feel like I only got to show really one side of my music. So this is a great opportunity to do something a little different. And this is something you wrote? So this is the, well, one of the first songs I've, I've done that I haven't written. You're not too excited. Oh, I'm, <laughs> are you scared? I am, I'll a be honest bit. with you. Yeah, yes. a little bit, but I believe in this song. In my career, when I've been scared, those are the moments they either totally crushed me yeah. or shot me to the stratosphere. Yeah. So you're taking a big swing, but yeah. you can't hit a home run without taking a big swing. I want to show that I'm not just a you know one trick pony. I want to prove that I that I deserve a spot in the finals and that I can go all the way. I think this guy genuinely has star quality. We'll see. Heard it from a friend you're leaving town and ain't coming back. Your heart was always running. Hate that it's come to that. It's barely even over. Hardly had time to cry. Girl, don't you think you owe me at least a bad goodbye? Might be too much to ask, I know. But baby, before you the building no simon what did you think well i love drake and i love drake as a an artist and also as a person and i said this a lot about drake however that wasn't my favorite song you've ever done and i think as a writer i believe that you're better than that okay well he didn't write that okay the songs he sang on agt he wrote this is one he decided to take a chance. Ah, okay, well this is bad mentoring. Because you are a great writer, and I didn't feel that there was a connection with you and that song, weirdly. And now you've told me, why? No, it did connect with him, and he said it. Well, you connected the audience. Did you like the song? They're the ones that are gonna vote. I like you a lot. I think that you're authentic, you're polished, your voice is amazing. I also, I like the song, to be honest with you. He decided to take a chance, Simon, and this is something we talked about in the mentoring. He so this is your decision? Yes. Is it, Howie? You're amazing. Thank you. I think you made a good choice. Thank you very much. Thank you. You know what I think? He'll wake up tomorrow morning and go, I wish I hadn't done that. I hope not. But you could have used your buzzer to save him if you really yeah, believed it. I know, why didn't you use it? I thought he didn't buzzer. need it. I thought the audience well, responded. Hello. <laughs> Say hello. For anyone who doesn't know, this is our winner last year, Adrian and Hurricane. I would say <laughs> the most incredible feeling watching <laughs> oh, that moment when <laughs> Adrian and Hurricane won. <laughs> Hurricane, are you excited? <laughs> yes, you are. Excited. She's very excited. <laughs> Can I ask you a question? What is more nerve wracking, being on the main show or this show? I think this show, because this is very hard competition, because this is the best of the best. Yeah. 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 
When I got Hurricane, I never dreamed about performing in the best talent show in the world. Crazy. <laughs> she should be in a movie yes! or a musical because she's a star. When Terry said our name, Adrian Hurricane! It was the best moment in my life because two things, winning and winning with Hurricane. We come to America's Got Talent to chase our dream together and that's what we, we did. Do you think she'll share any of the money with you? I, I, I hope so. She's a million dollar dog, look. Now after winning Hurricanes, next dream is to be in a movie. The title is How to Stop a Hurricane. Yeah. We've seen a lot of dog acts over the years. Don't tell anyone, Hurricane, but you are my favorite. How do you better what you did before? I want to create like a sequel of the audition. I think it would be very funny. To do something we've never seen before, that's really important. To be the winner of Fantasy League, that would be amazing. We can wait to go back on that stage. Okay, honey, come back. <laughs> yeah, she's ready. Bravo, honey, Ken. <laughs> <laughs>seen a lot of dog acts we've never seen one like hurricane where it seems like hurricane has trained you yes yes always always simon's very lucky to have you in his squad yeah you are such a dynamic duo and it's quite a long act for a dog to remember and it's just really incredible what you do thank you thank you very much mel first time yeah this is the first time that i'm seeing this and it's just adorable. You are a great example of what the Fantasy League is all about. Thank you. I want a hurricane. Since the day we've met you, you have just got better and better and better. And I really think the fact that you put your title on the line to come back to compete again says so much about you as thank, well. Thank you very much. Yeah. I really, really hope the audience votes you through. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well done. Oh. 
I, I want to tell you a, a, a small secret. What's going on? They're whispering the stuff. Oh my god. <laughs> so oh my Simon, god. Simon, what is all this whispering? Hello, hello. Just when I thought things were going so well, Adrian just said to me, I had a big crush on Mel B. Wow. <laughs> and can I have a picture with her? Of course you can. You see, he wanted me on my team. I'm sorry you had happened, time and happened again. <laughs> when I was a teenager, I had a, a picture of me on, on the wall. You were very, very young, weren't yeah. you? <laughs> <Stop>. <laughs> My name is Preacher Lawson, and I was a finalist on season 12 of America's Got Talent. Let the blessings rain down! I think you are unbelievably talented, and I think this could be your time. Thank you so much! Comedy was my number one focus for so many years. Any job I ever had was just to support my comedy addiction. And I mean, I was broke, man. I remember eating out of a trash can. Right before I got on America's Got Talent, I definitely regretted doing comedy. I was like, this was a mistake. I should have stayed in school, but they got for America's Got Talent. Get the camera up! You were gonna get everything you ever dreamed of. I never thought I could even get as far as I did. So when I got to the finale, I was like, well, maybe I can win this thing. Darcy Lee! And I couldn't. I didn't win. But that was seven years ago. I'm a little more experienced. All right? After America's Got Talent, that's when things started changing for me. I performed in every single state of America. I did a tour in Europe. I did two specials. I was on a show called America's Got Talent. I was on there. I lost to a 12-year-old in Twiniquist, y'all. I've done a lot of things. But you know, with comedy, the finish line is always moving. My goal is to sell out Madison Square Garden. That'd wow. be awesome. He has a magnetism that makes people like him. I think the key to this one is to make sure that it's crazy relatable. Doing things that everybody in that audience has done. You want them to not only laugh at it, but you want them to say, that's what I do. Yeah, knowing that Howard believes in me and him being a fellow comedian, it feels amazing. I'm not here to get second place. I'm not here to participate. I'm gonna win the whole thing. All right, roll them credits, because it's the end. Go, go, oh, go, yeah. yeah. Oh! Well, I remember this guy before. Woo! He's always funny. I love you. What's I up? love this guy. How you doing? Preacher Lawson. Hey, what's up, Howard Mendel? Are you happy that he picked you? I am so, I feel like it's a golden opportunity. Well, it could have been a golden opportunity. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Yes. I can't believe. I Actually, can't believe I'm that. a comedian, Howie. Yes. Howie, you did know the preacher was coming on tonight, right? But you gave your golden don't, buzzer to another act. Uh, yeah, I, in, in the moment, I got caught up in emotion. To be fair, they look like me with my shirt off. So that's... <laughs> 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 Every time I've been on America's Got Talent, I've been losing. And this time, I'm here to take over, okay? <laughs> that's what I want. <laughs> Showed him the laugh. All right. What's up, y'all? Good to be back on America's Got Talent. This is great, man. Changed my life. Got the tour everywhere. Got the tour. I was in England. In England! Sorry, that was weird. I'm sorry. <laughs> England! I like doing that. I know. I know it's, it's bad. I like doing it, though. England! But it's bad. But, like, you know who else does really bad impressions? Uh, English people when they do American accents. It's bad, too. <laughs> They always do the same accent. I'm from America! Every time. They do that one, or they do like, I'm American, right? <laughs> or the third one is, yo, 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 my man. And I'm, I'm like, I wonder what race he is. You know, they just assume all black people in America sound like DMX for some reason. American the better one my dogs, <laughs> Woo! I gotta pee, all right? I don't know how to transition. I'm just letting you know I gotta pee, I gotta pee. You ever have to pee like real bad, like, you know, real bad, you at a public restroom, right? Right? And instead of it saying like men and women, they try to be creative, it's like a boat and a fish. You're like, which one? <laughs> Everyone's walked into the wrong restroom. Every woman in here has walked in and been like, when they put urinals inside the restroom? <laughs> and every dude has walked in like, is that a couch? <laughs> they got a couch, is that a vending machine? What kind of candy is that? That's some weird candy. 
They got lotion? Why they got lotion inside the restroom? <laughs> Can't have a lotion in the men's restroom. Oh! Oh! <laughs> yeah. You know, because <laughs> we're not going to use it. It's a waste of lotion. What are y'all laughing at? What were y'all laughing at? It's funny because women are cleaner than men until it comes to your restroom. I went into a woman's restroom, I seen pee on the toilet. Like, I expect that in a men's restroom. Fellas, how many times you walked in the restroom and you seen pee on the ground immediately? Right? Who's that guy walking in? Oh, man, I was so close. There's always some old dude peeing three feet from the toilet. It's like, come on, man. We all know you don't got that much horsepower. <laughs> but... Women are funny. Women are the only people that go to the restroom in groups. You rarely see dudes. I got to pee, Brandon. Let's roll, brother. Should have said some money. Let's get out of here, man. Where's Tyler at? Tyler here? Yeah. All three of us, we can go together, you know? Hopefully, uh, hopefully they got a couch. You know, we can uh, take selfies. That'd be awesome. That'd be nice. Is that lotion? <laughs> My name is Preacher Lawson. Thank you so much. Y'all are awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. You got jokes, you got charisma. I don't have a golden buzzer anymore. You don't! But I got a feeling you're not gonna need it. I got a feeling that you're gonna be one of the six that go through today. Thank you. I feel like this was the funniest set ever. Not oh, even just you. from you, from anyone ever oh, wow. doing a set. Oh, you better stop, girl. You went. The only way you can judge this is, did we laugh more? And the answer yes. is yes. yes. That is what I would call a winning performance. Oh. Yes. And I really nice. like you. Yes, we love you. How is my hype man? I appreciate that. I love you, buddy. I appreciate you, man. Thank you so much. Absolutely brilliant. That was so oh, good. Yeah. You're so good. Mr. Piffles. It's so good to see you. Obviously, he's on my team, the dream team. Heidi. Eat it, Howie. Eat it. <laughs> I know. I would love to have you. Yeah, I... well, you don't. And that's why you're going down, son. Yes. You're going down. Fellow. Woo! I just recently became American. Ah. Oh. As an American, it's my duty to win. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> When I first moved to America, no one knew who I was. I walked down the street, nobody cared. America's Got Talent changed my life. The audience, they love dragons. You know the one thing dragons love more than gold? Golden buzzers. I got the golden buzzer from Neil Patrick Harris himself. So I got all the way to the finals, and I'm thinking, have I won the heart of America? Take him to Turns out the answer was no. But thankfully, good things happen. And America's Got Talent, even when you lose. I got my very own show at the Flamingo Hotel. <laughs> there are billboards of us all over the city. Fifth and Major Dragon, the loser of America's Got Talent. Mr. Pibbles and I, now we're American, we won that billboard. That says Fifth and Major Dragon, the winner of America's Got Talent. Fancy League. Oh, hello. Wo ist denn mein kleiner Drachen? Uh, I am. I, I can. I can. When I found out Heidi Klum, supermodel, queen of the catwalk, Victoria's Secret model, she drafted me, I'm like, yeah, it's a good match. I feel like look-wise, we need to, like, step it up a notch. I'm ready. Heidi's plan to up my performance is mostly cosmetic, so I'm pretty offended about that. But maybe she's onto something. Maybe this is the way to win. Judges, join me on stage. Oh, no. People remember me getting a golden buzzer from Neil Patrick Harris. So to thank him, I gave him a bite of my sandwich. <laughs> Tonight I'm here to tell you, we're gonna make the greatest sandwich ever. Who's with me? 
We're starting with you, Harry. Okay. 12 toasters fully loaded, son. You're going to pick up those dice. You can use one or two. Which I'll, one do you want? I'll do one. Do one? One. Right. Roll those dice to choose a slice. Off you go. That's it. Where is it going to land on? Dung, 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 dung. Number one. Oh, bang. Number one. <laughs> Howie, back to your seat. We've got okay. white bread to start off with. Now we need a meat to go with the white bread, please. Simon, you're going to spin this wheel of meat. I hope you're not a vegan. This is quite heavy. Off you go. There you go, Simon. Come on. No, oh, look, you've broken it. Oh my you God. literally broke it. I'll, I'll just be the little flappy thing. Okay, Simon, are you happy with tuna or do you want bacon? Tuna. 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 I would do bacon. Give it up for Simon. Simon goes back to his seat. Heidi! Yes! Do you have a pen? No. You're going to take the pen, please, Heidi. Yeah. You're going to write your name, Heidi, on the little stickers that say Heidi. Got it. Okay, that's yes. it. Heidi, please. Now, Heidi, yes. I'm also going to need a hair. The longest hair you can find, yeah? Just yeah. Uh, pull it out, please, Heidi. Yeah. Pull it out. Let's have a look at it. Oh! Yeah. Does that work? Oh, you've got a clump of them. That, yeah, that's... Yeah. Oh, my God. Is that OK? This, this is gross. You got a few little straggly ones there, didn't you? <laughs> now, let's get back to the sandwich and this cheese board. All right, pick up the darts. Give me your best shot, Heidi. OK, I hear something. Colby, Jack, give it up for Heidi. Back to your seat, Heidi. Pick up those rings, Melby. Face those vegetables. All right, if you like one, put a ring on it. Oh, 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 we're good. No, no, it's not going to bounce on the end. I... Oh! Chili. A chili. <laughs> give it up for Melby as Melby returns to her seat. And to choose our final topping, please welcome little Mr. Pivos. Oh! Look at him! He's still going! Jay, spin that turntable or toppings, off you go. Mr. Bill, stop one with the power of your mind. Anyone you want. Anyone you want, buddy, with the power of your mind. It looks like ketchup. We're going ketchup, that's it, perfect. Oh, lovely. We've got the tomato ketchup. We've got the chili. We've got the Colby Jack. We've got the white bread. And of course, we have the tuna, correct? Yeah. Yeah? yeah. Is it just me? Or is there something missing? Hi, Piff. It's me. Inside the safe is my gift to you. The greatest sandwich of all time. <laughs> I hope you enjoy it, Piff. You've earned it. With much admiration, Neil, the Sandwich King, Patrick Harris. <laughs> Neil Patrick Harris put a sandwich in that safe. Terry? Yes, sir. Get out here. Give it yes, up for sir. Terry. <laughs> Terry, we're going to lower that safe down. Judges, do not take your eyes off of that safe. We're not taking Terry, it off. Now, you notice it's uh, locked with a combination lock. Okay. I believe the first number to be zero. All right. Try another, a second zero. Third zero. <laughs> Hang on, zero, zero, zero. Zero. Oh, oh, bang! Yes. Got it first time. Yes. Terry, open up the safe. Is there a sandwich bag for me? Yes. You're going to reach into the bag. You're going to remove the sandwich that I'm praying is there. OK. <gasps> there it is. Oh, wow. Place this over here on my head. Oh, yeah, there it is. All right. Give it up for Terry. <laughs> I'm going to open up the sandwich. Is it me? Heidi, is that white bread like how we chose? Yes. It is? It is. Okay, Simon, do you remember what you chose to oh, meet? Tuna. Tuna. Oh. tuna, is that yes. tuna there? Yeah. Heidi? Yeah. What kind of cheese is that? The cheese that I picked. Colby Jack? Yes. Mel P? Look, what's that? Oh, what's that just there? Chilies. Some chilies? Yeah. yeah. Chilies. What? Uh, Heidi, are you going to stick a finger in that? Mm, I don't know about that. Come on, Heidi, just stick a finger in okay, there. Okay, it's all for you. Yeah, that's it. Oh. Lick it. Lick it. That's it, perfect. Mm. Perfect. Lick it. No. Is that ketchup? It is ketchup. Yeah. But wait. <laughs> I've got to test the sandwich. No. Yes. Yes. Oh. What is it? What is it? Uh, I think it's a little room. What? Piff 
the Mighty Dragon. Good night. Standing ovation. That's amazing. I have to do that. No idea. Honestly, I have never seen Simon Cowell this gobsmacked. You're gobsmacked, yes or yes? Uh, seriously, yes. Um, you delivered, I think, the best overall performance I've seen from you. And you know what? Maybe this is the year you are going to win. You didn't just say you want to win. You came with a winning performance. You really did. I believe in magic, so, so I'm I. trying to... I don't even want to know how you did it, because it's magic. Yeah, I'm not going to tell you, Mel. <laughs> I wish you good luck. I hope you will win it this time. We're going to win it, Heidi. You got to win it. Simon, that was the best performance he's ever done. I totally agree. Wow. Thank you. This is great. Welcome. Hi. 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 How are you? Hi. I'm good. Good. Well, okay. The, the, the first thing I want to say is... Okay. Wes is very nervous. Oh, oh very nervous, yeah. I'm very nervous. Uh. Well, look, I don't want to give anything away. So, good luck. He's sweating. Simon, well, he's, he's nervous. Sweating. But why is he nervous? Because he wants to win. He's a lot. A sword. Well, you'll see. It's very dangerous, this act. Ten seconds. Let's see what your mentoring has done. Shh, shh, shh. Okay, here we go. Come on, Whites. Come on, Whites. Girl, look at that body. You kidding? Girl, look at that body. Girl, look at that body. I, I, I work out when I walk in the spot. This is what I see. Emotional. Listen, I think Mel is just being over competitive, didn't need to buzz you, so why I didn't did. you like that? I did need to buzz because I just wasted, what, four minutes of my life that I'm never going to get back. Really? I didn't. Yes, really. Really? Eh? Eh? Really, really. So you would pay to go and watch it, you know what? People love him. <laughs> Yeah! Thank you. At the end of the day, you know, we just had two guys balancing on swords. And you and don't you think that was out, dangerous at the end? That None of it was dangerous. 
Yeah. Yeah. Really, yeah. Okay. All right, which is because you didn't get him on your team. <laughs> Howie. Simon obviously worked with you on the nipple tug. Trust me, when you see this back on TV, it's going to look a lot better. Yeah, and, but, I, and, and but you this know is the voting audience. Yeah, and, well, true. yes, but these ones are going to love this show. I don't know about that. We have audience right here, and they're not sure about it. These don't like they it. They did. No, they did not. Well, these ones loved it. Uh, no, they just they shook their heads. Can I just say something? There's nothing that you can say to make people <laughs> vote. He has spent two years preparing for this performance. He's flown a long, long time to be here. He's emotional. He wants to win. And yes, it might not be your cup of tea, but we look for things that are different. You're unique. You're funny. And I really like you. USA, America, yeah. This is true. This is true. America, I love you. Uh, Thank you. Bye. Thank you. My name is Grace Good. I am a hula hooping entertainer. We've seen a lot of people do hula hooping, but never like this. Oh, yes. Performing for the semis was definitely like a nervousness that I've never felt before. You dropped the baton? No! Yes, she did. I think I was more hurt than anything, especially because I really like Howie. <laughs> I think the pressure got to you. America has voted. Eduardo Antonio Trevino! It was really sad and disappointing to not make it through it in the next round. But the fact that America wanted to get me back for an AGC Fantasy League, that really like lifted my spirits a lot. It's great! Oh my goodness! Hi! No. I want to fly. <laughs> oh, you <yeah>. good? <laughs> yes. This is what you do? I mean, I'm like hanging here like a potato <laughs> bag. The fact that Heidi chose me means so much to me because I see her as such a badass female. Tell me what you want to do. I have aerial, I have hula hoops, fire tricks. Yeah. I have some new things. Yeah. So I'm kind of like overwhelmed almost to like figure out what I want to put in. What I love about yeah. you is that I feel like you can do all of it. You're not limited on one mm -hmm. thing. I know that she said her last performance, you know, her nerves might, might have run away with her a little bit. This is life and things happen. And I feel like if Howie would have not pointed it out, no one would have ever known. Tonight is extremely important to me. My dream is to have my own show in Vegas and it's so scary to be up against people that actually are living that dream already. All right, here we go. Fantasy League, you got it. Throw now, okay, right. awesome. <laughs> I know what it's like to go home, but this is redemption. And with Heidi's help, we are going all the way. If I was an astronaut, I'd be floating in midair. And a broken heart would just fall. To someone else down there I would be the center Of my lonely universe But I'm only human And I'm crashing down to earth
hard as well. You're really, really, really talented at everything, but I'm trying to work out what your unique selling point is. When I go out for dinner, the worst thing is, is when someone orders a starter, because it's like, I just want the main course. And I think with your act tonight, the main course was the end, and the starter was the stuff on the ball. You didn't like the ball at all? No. Did you guys like the ball? Yes! You showcased everything. It's really, really hard yeah. what she's just done. I know. And she's crammed it all I in. Know. And I think good on you. Howie, what about you? On AGT, you got mad at me for pointing out that you slipped. I wasn't mad at you. But how about today? That was fantastic. Yes. She was hanging in the air. She was lighting on yes. fire. She was stepping on balls. You've yeah, done it all, you. young lady. Thank you, Howie. And it's not up to us. It's up to the audience. Wow. Thank you, guys. Bardalian Brothers, welcome, welcome. I know who you are. It's so nice to see you again. Hello, hello. English is not their first language. Oh, yes. And so they're originally from Armenia. Yes. Yes. They're from Armenia. And they're brothers. What you do is incredible. Thank, Thank you. you. We were semi-finalists in Britain Got Talent. It was absolutely thrilling. I don't know how you do it. It was like it needed to be a bit more dangerous, actually. We didn't go to the finals, but we learn from our mistakes. We start to improve our tricks. American Got Talent, it's a very big show. Oh. We are so happy Mel B is our mentor. Yeah. I had to have them on my dream team because I know they've captured audiences. And I think America is going to be really excited to finally see them on the AGT stage. Yeah, look mean, like you're gonna... You like it? Well, I want you to look even meaner. She wants us to be sexy. Yeah, like rip okay. it off. All right, let's try it. <laughs> <laughs> Heidi's got the other two brothers on her team, but I think our team is better, because it's more dangerous what you do. This performance, we have something special planned. It's very dangerous. It could be our last performance. Try this at home, y'all, please.
What did you think? What you did, I thought it was okay. Up until you took the sword on sword, if you fall, your entire face exactly. is impaled. Yeah. That took it to a whole new level. Thank you. Thank you. Simon? I think, you know, because we had a, not a dissimilar act earlier on who just had more levels. But it's very different, though. It is different. I know. Very different. They right. didn't balance on swords. Look, I think you are really, really, really talented. However, I think in this show, you've got to step it up from where you were before. I saw you on Britain's Got Talent, and I don't think that was a step up. But it's not down to me. You won't see that anywhere else apart from on my team with those guys. So make sure you vote for them because they deserve it. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you. I don't think they'll go through. Oh, don't be jealous now. I'm don't be nasty. It. These are the Mersey girls. Um, tell us a little bit about you. We've all been dancing together since we were literally tiny. Um, it's what we all wanted to do as a career. That didn't end up happening for me. I was diagnosed with a condition called scoliosis, which is a curvature of the spine. And I was told that my dance career would end after I get surgery to fix that. So we were like, let's go out with a bang before my surgery. And we applied with Britain's Got Talent. That's when we ended up getting on the show and I met Simon. And that's when he completely changed my life. Aww. Wow. We had the time of our lives dancing on that stage. And the next thing we see... Every performance, you've given it 100%. You might be in with a shot tonight after that song, you know that. The only dance after the final and you say you've got a shot. Once you get that far, you go, oh, maybe we actually can do it. In ninth place is Mercy Girls. So there was a surgery here in America that meant I would be able to dance after, but it was... <laughs> over in America, I'm from the UK. So Simon said that he's gonna help me get that surgery. So he flew me out. Aww, wow. Simon. My dream was taken away from me. And in a split second, Simon just gave that dream back to me. Love you. I can dance now for the, for the rest of my life. When we found out that we were on Mel B's dream team, we were just ecstatic. I drafted you because your story on BGT really moved me. So can you incorporate that in your routine? All of our dreams from a very young age has been to come to Hollywood and get to dance. Director! She needs to have like a low back so you see the surgeries that she's had. This is our first time back dancing. OK, here we go guys, clearing stage. Well, I think we've got this. Wow, buddy. This is not your child that you took care of well, a he human is being. He's nice sometimes. It's That's, really I'm nice. I'm really impressed. Yeah. When I want to give up, will you be by my side? If I fall, will I fall alone? Or will you be there to catch me?
You know, I thought what I watched is very good, and it is a beautiful story, and I'm really moved. But this stage is kind of hosting the best of the best, and I don't know if it's great. I do have two metal rods in my spine. Yeah. I, just, I try my best. Okay, yes. well, you're fantastic, and I'm very proud of you, young lady. Thank you. I feel like you dance, all of you, you dance like a well-oiled machine. But I do have to also be honest, you know, I find it a little bit snoozy, I do. You know, because we do have dance acts on the stage that are really like flying through the air and they yeah, do just wild. you don't care them. You don't know them. And, you know, in other dance groups, they just get replaced. These girls all stuck together and were like, no, no you I are coming back you. in. Simon? What do you think? The mountain that I wouldn't climb for you. I like acts who want to win, who put the hours in and get better. And that's what you did tonight. And Mel's right. A, a lot of other people would have just said goodbye and carried on without you. But they didn't. They stuck by you. And stories are important. Yes. I think you're going to inspire a lot of people. And I think the audience will vote you through to the next round because you deserve it. Thank you so much. Well done, Jersey Girl. Come here, guys. How does that feel? Amazing. Yeah. Let's see who's taking the first spot in the semi-final. Bardanian Brothers and Wes P. Please step forward. Oh my God. The act going into the semi-finals is... There's gonna be a surprise result. It's gonna be Wes P. Damn what I would be so mad. Vardanian Brothers! Big thanks to Wes P. You were amazing. Congratulations, guys. One more time for the Vardanian Brothers. Yes! Four spots left. Mersey Girls. Oh. And Sheldon Riley. The next act going into the semifinals is... Sheldon Riley! Oh, I'm happy, but I'm so sad. Big thanks to the Mersey girls. It's been awesome watching you. One more time for Sheldon Riley. Just three spots left. Fifth, the Magic Dragon. And Grace Good. Please step forward. Both! I Both want both! The third act going into the semifinals is. Grace Good! That really is a shocker. Thank you, Piff. You are amazing. Oh, thank you. Good luck in the semis. One more time for Grace Good. Yes. We are down to the last two spots in the semifinal. Oh, no. That's two of his acts. Preacher Lawson. Adrian Stoika and Hurricane. And Drake Milligan. 
please step forward. The next act going into the semifinals is... Adrian Stoika and Hurricane! Congratulations. Now you have it. Amazing job one more time for Adrian Stoika and Hurricane! There's one spot left. I think Drake's going home. Yeah. Preacher and Drake, you're both on Howie's team. God. Oh. The votes are in. This is like Sophie's Choice. The act taking the last spot in the semifinals is... Oh. Preacher Lawson! I'm happy. Don't Drake. Thank you, Drake. One more time for Drake Milligan, y'all. Oh, my God! Preacher, you are in the semis. Yeah. And people, let's give it up for your semifinalists. Adrian and Hurricane, Sheldon Riley, Vardanian Brothers, Grace Good, Preacher Lawson, and tonight's golden buzzer, the Ramadani Brothers. Yeah. We're back next week with more sensational performances from the world's greatest talent. I am Terry Crews. Good night, America. wants me to lose weight, but she doesn't know how to tell me. She's in New York, she comes to LA. You know how you see your parents, you become a child again? I'm like, oh my God, mommy! She's like, Jacqueline, Lord of mercy, you're fat. <laughs> Jesus, you are fat. What are you eating, people? <laughs> I don't like weight loss TV shows. If you love that show, The Biggest Loser, you and I can't be friends. <laughs> You know how that show works? If somebody's overweight, you lock them on an island, and they have to work out eight hours a day, seven days a week, and oh yeah, we're gonna make you wear a small spandex bra, and baby panties, and wear you on a scale, and for cattle, on national TV. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't you lose weight? Who's losing these contests? <laughs> you want to impress me, get a bunch of fatties and lock them in a donut shop. <laughs> <laughs> the first one to not go into a diabetic coma wins. That's the show <laughs> I would support. How did I get into this? How do I make noises? I don't know. I grew up making noises. I can't stop it, man. <laughs> when I was growing up, I lived next to an active runway. My father was in the Air Force. So that meant every few seconds. <laughs> that was me. My mom wasn't prepared for that. Why is the six month old baby making noises? <laughs> now, later on in life, I learned that these sounds can get you in trouble. I'll give you an example. On an aircraft, this is what I did. Not allowed to do this. <laughs> Don't do that on a plane, man. If you go, they're gonna think it's real. I did that. This is 
is Barbara Walters, and today on my show, I have award-winning actress, Natalie Portman. Natalie, I hear you're having a baby. I am Barbara. <laughs> We're thinking of naming the baby Oscar, but that's, that, that's silly because that's my cat's name, so. Hey, y'all, it's Molly Cyrus. What's up? Okay, good. What, Dad? No, I'm not going to clean my room right now. Want me to clean out your bank account? <laughs> you do jokes, I do impressions. I got it. I could do jokes. I'm sure you could. Could you do an impression? Yes, yes, I could do an impression. Go ahead, do it. What? Do it. Impression. Yeah, and then you tell me who I'm doing. Okay, all right, let me think. King Kardashian. What? <laughs> you are tweeting without thinking. Donald Trump. <laughs> no. It's cheap, it's cheap. Animals, it's a crapshoot. Crapshoot, <clears throat> come on! <laughs> All right, now listen, I have an impression. Okay, I am not a professional. That's fine. All right, t tell me who this is. Ready? Yeah, who's this? <clears throat> I did not have sexual relations with that woman. Elton John. <laughs> in what world do you live in, Rebecca? Where some 17-year-old dude is showing up to this house party like, <laughs> y'all not gonna believe this. I got Pinot Grigio! <laughs> yeah, got that Grigio! <laughs> Let's do shots of Chardonnay. Let's start a book club! <laughs> yeah. It's never happened, right? You don't know a 17-year-old that owns a corkscrew. That's weird, all right? Not one time in your entire life can you tell me a time where you've seen a 17-year-old dude be like, Mm, 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 mm. This Merlot pairs so well with the Doritos Locos Taco. Mm. <laughs> oh, that's good. It's just something about Zinfandels in a Hot Pocket that is to die for. You know, I worked at this grocery store for a lot of hateful years. Why is it when you hate your job, they won't fire you? <laughs> And now look, I worked in the worst department at the grocery store, not the meat, not produce, not the freezer. I worked in the steel department. You familiar with the steel department, right? Self-checkout lane? I got paid to watch people steal all day. And people think you stupid. Like, you know when they're going to rob you when they're ringing up their stuff, they always got to look back up at you. They're like, boop, boop. This one dude tried to humiliate me, like I knew he was gonna rob us because I'm looking at him, he's looking at me, I'm like, just steal it. <laughs> but he, try, he tries to play me in front of the entire store while he's ringing his stuff up. He makes the beat noise with his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't even do it right, like you gotta act this out, go all in, raise your pitch at least. He's like, Bleh. <laughs> I like the produce is not even supposed to make a sound. <laughs> You're beeping unbeepable stuff. To become an America's Got Talent champion, it was like all my dreams came true at once. I thought he was going to be a singer. So I decided to do some research on the judges. Did you know that backstage there are five hairdressers, three makeup artists, a wardrobe department, and a whole team of nutritionists? <laughs> And that's just to maintain Simon's new look. Oh. 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 Heidi, uh -oh. my mum told me that you're a Victoria's Secret supermodel. <laughs> and she showed me one of your videos. But then Dad came home from work 
and we watched all your videos. <laughs> over and over again. I got a motorcycle. I don't like telling people I have a motorcycle, because every time I tell someone, they always got to tell me a story about how their friends crashed on a motorcycle. You know, like, why do people have to be so negative? I don't go up to pregnant women telling them my dad left. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so annoying. So annoying. I walked at my apartment one time, right? I walked at my apartment, and my neighbor walked up to me. She was like, oh my God, you got a motorcycle? Are you stars? Are you stars? You better be careful. I got in a car wreck the other day. My car flipped eight times. I'm looking to be alive. Blessed, right? Yeah. She black, by the way. <laughs> Everyone around us was like, you know, that was, that is crazy that your car flipped eight times, you're alive, you are blessed, you know? And I'm, I'm over here thinking, who the heck counted, right? Like, <laughs> who's that calm when their car's flipping in the air? Ah! One! Like, who's doing that? <laughs> My name is Preacher, thank you so much, I appreciate it. That's, That's it. it. That's kind of clueless, you know, but it seems to me kids today are a little bit entitled. Am I right? Right? Okay. So my daughter turns 16 and she says, Mom, I want to go to Coachella and I want you to get me a hotel room. Oh. Yeah, I know. I'm like, you're 16. Listen to yourself. A hotel room. <laughs> I mean, if you can't find a guy who can afford a van by now, I mean, really. <laughs> When I grew up, my mom and her friends, they partied 24-7. You know, they always, always brought flasks on field trips. Okay? <laughs> right? So, I go on my daughter's first field trip. I take my flask. Right? Yeah. Howie? Right. I'm not going to get on a bus full of first graders sober. Not, not whatever. Okay? <laughs> I take out my flask. You know, I have a little sip. And all the other field trip moms, they just go ballistic. They're like, she's got a flask, she's got a flask. You know, like I'm some kind of terrorist, right? <laughs> I'm like, calm down, Biatch. I'm not driving this bus. I can teach you how to do Ryan Reynolds, but first you have to do Jim Carrey's voice. And in order to do Jim Carrey, just imagine yourself as a giant Canadian bird, okay? <laughs> Hi there, judges. Uh, I have some voices for you. <laughs> Take that Canadian bird down to a sexy whisper, and you have Ryan Reynolds. Hi there. <laughs> I have some voices for you, judges. <laughs> I hope you enjoy them. <laughs> that did sound like Ryan Reynolds. Oh my God. Okay, here's how to do Seth Rogen's voice. Yeah. Take Santa Claus's laugh. Ho, ho, ho. Now imagine Santa Claus eats a different kind of cookie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> this is a crazy job. I just lay down chimneys and I deliver packages to kids and eat their cookies. <laughs> now you can do that. I have a twin sister. And I actually don't talk a lot about being a twin because people ask really stupid twin questions. Like, whenever I say I have an identical twin without fail, someone will go, do you guys look alike? <laughs> we are very different personality-wise, me and my sister. I'm very silly and playful. My sister's very dark and sarcastic. And she has low self-esteem, which is weird, because she has my face. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what it's like when someone that looks exactly like you calls you up and goes, I feel so ugly. <laughs> That is our face. <laughs> you know, I'm not from California, but I look like I am. Just another wobbly guy on the sidewalk. <laughs> I made eight bucks walking over here. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, can you guys see this bracelet? Yeah. yeah. Good. Just uh, making sure. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody always thinks that this is one of those copper magnetic healing bracelets. I'm like, hey, does that thing work? I'm like, oh yeah, man. I was in a wheelchair last week. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm gonna put it on this arm next week. 
I better take it off soon, though. You know, I don't want to get too better. <laughs> might mess up my show, and then I have to figure out how to be a magic singing ventriloquist or whatever. <laughs> Let's just say we're not getting a puppet on that thing. Oh, my God! I just got the citizenship. Yeah! Until I got my citizenship, I never had a road rage. <laughs> if somebody cut me off, I'd be like, oh, so sorry. I was driving too slow. <laughs> but the day I got the citizenship, somebody cut me off. I'm like, what the heck? You can't cut me off. This is my land. <laughs> That's when I realized I become true American. <laughs> oh, that's great. He's hilarious. Because I felt entitled. <laughs> oh! Before the citizenship, somebody hold the door for me. I ran really fast. I'm like, thank you so much. After the citizenship, I'm like, uh, you hold the door, you peasant. <laughs> I got sassy. <laughs> I love her. It was very hard on me growing up. He used to call me a huge waste. <laughs> you see, both of my parents wanted me to become a lawyer. Never even came close to becoming a lawyer, but I was once involved in a suit. <laughs> but I've since traveled the world. Went to Spain, fell madly in love with a Spanish sundress. And we broke up and I was pantalones. Yeah! I love him. But I'm happily married now. Oh. <laughs> My wife and I are Polly. It's polyester. <laughs> Our daughter Capri. <laughs> brought home a pair of sweatpants. Hey, I want to be a supportive father, but I want to see her date someone ironed with a crease. This guy looked like he'd been donated. <laughs> she asked if he could spend the night. I said, in my house, you'll sleep in separate drawers. <laughs> you know the problem when you go to a nursing home and you look like me? Yeah, they wouldn't let me out. <laughs> the only reason I'm here tonight is I had to get a night pass from the front desk. <laughs> The first thing I found out when I got old is that young people hate old people. Oh, is that right? No. 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 Really? Did you ever drive behind an old person? <laughs> yes. Does this look familiar? Yes. <laughs> yeah. The worst thing I'm experiencing now at 80 is that my hearing has gotten awful. I'm talking to this woman the other day, and she tells me she has a peanut allergy. Right, I misheard the word. I said, what happens? She said, I start choking and gagging. I applied to work at the Coco Foundation when I was in college, uh, and they rejected me because I have hearing loss. But they <laughs> Yes, boo, the Cocoa Foundation. Uh, they, told, they told me I was a liability issue because if the gorilla were to sneak up on me, I would not be able to hear it, which I can't say with any degree of certainty, uh, <laughs> but probably that seems true. Um, so you guys seem like a nice crowd full of hearing people, so I'm just going <laughs> to toss this question out to the room. Um, what are y'all going to do different if a gorilla sneaks up on you. Uh, <laughs> yeah, thank you. I would love to know. Uh, that makes a lot of sense. DM me after the show. I'm just desperate to know what home field advantage y'all have uh, <laughs> with your two-second head start. Ridiculous. Nothing. Nothing. The only thing you're going to do different than me is die scared. That's it. Um. Yo, this is a true story. When I was 10 years old, my parents sent me to Tourette's camp. Yeah, that's where the joke should end. 
It's a real place. And I didn't realize it till this moment, but I found out that when other people twitch, it makes me twitch more. <laughs> so on the first day, they put us in a circle with a hundred kids. <laughs> oh, no. The kid next to me did a shoulder roll and my Tourette saw that and took that as a challenge. And I threw him a head flop. The girl next to him did a full body twitch and everybody saw that and all hell broke loose. <laughs> that is funny. Some of my charts, I can't explain why they're true. I just know from experience, this is what's gonna happen. Here's the locker room at my gym. I am the blue dot, I walk in. I start to get changed. The minute I get all my clothes off, 12 guys walk in and this is where their lockers are. <laughs> that is so true. <laughs> It defies statistics. Sometimes statistics sound scary, but it's not when you look at it from a different angle. When I first got married, I heard 44% of marriages end in divorce. That's a scary number. Think about that. 40, my wife and I are like, do we stand a chance? Think of the other side. If 44% of marriages end in divorce, you know what that means? 56% of marriages end in death. <laughs> Till death do us part. <laughs> Those are the two ways that marriages end, folks. If, if you're married, enjoy it now. It does not end well. <laughs> Give it up for my dad. Gerald Kelly, the comedian. I love that dude. But he's a loser. <laughs> Why? <laughs> oh my God. I'm seven years old, and we have the same job. <laughs> The other day, he was like, hey, yo, Hunter, are you going to work tonight? <laughs> if you going, I'm going. We have the same job. <laughs> My roommate's actually white, and he's like, uh, this is racist. Not all white people are serial killers. I'm like, well. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like all serial killers are white here, buddy. We're on season 14. Come on. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's a clean sweep. Let's go. And I feel bad because white people are actually the only people in the world that can be serial killers. There's no other ethnicity in the world that can get away with eight unsolved murders in a row. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, you don't think black people want to be serial killers? Of course they do. They cannot. Could you imagine a black serial killer? He would get pulled over on the way to getting supplies. <laughs> <laughs> he hasn't even done anything yet. Come on. Indians, Asians, Hispanics, we can't be serial killers. Our family's way too nosy. <laughs> My mom's an old Indian lady. She's a snitch. <laughs> My mom will just show up. Where is the rope? What happened to the duct tape? Where is the bleach? I'm calling the cops. I'm like, come on, mom. You raised me. <laughs> Don't do this. I'm your son. Come on. <laughs> I'm 34. I don't look 34. I, I don't look any age. I just look like I've been through stuff. <laughs> and 34 is a difficult age because it's not old, but it's old enough that the world's changed. Like, I, I'm old enough to remember time was you saw a fella with a neck tattoo. Well, then you thought, oh, I'm about to see a dead body. Now you see a fella with a neck tattoo. All you think is, oh, this latte is going to be amazing. <laughs> and, and, and you got to do things to stay young. I, I do things to stay young. I, I recently borrowed money from my parents. <laughs> For those of you who never borrowed money from your parents, the crew will know this, the celebrities will not. <laughs> you have to gather your parents together and go, hello, mother, father, you know how you're supposed to teach me responsibility? Well, you failed, and that comes with a hefty fine. <laughs> I just got broken up with, it was an open relationship, it means you can be with anybody you want. I didn't know this, apparently, the girl can also do that. <laughs> you guys know, read the fine print. And my girl got the first person. I made the mistake of asking her this guy's name. She told me, you ever hear somebody's name and then know immediately that this person is a better lover than you? I was like, what's his name? She's like, Alejandro. I'm like, no! No! Alejandro! You, you, you couldn't be with uh, Eugene, you know? Or, or a Simon? You couldn't do a Simon. You couldn't do a Simon. You couldn't do a Simon. <laughs> Listen, 
Listen, if you're not laughing right now, if you're not laughing right now, your name is Eugene, all right? <laughs> Every Eugene here is like, actually, I've heard they're pretty vigorous, okay? <laughs> yeah. So I, I met this guy, and it was a relief because his name was Alejandro, but his voice was Eugene. <laughs> Straight up, he comes over, he's like, hey man, how's it going? I'm like, much better now. <laughs> as soon as my son touched my finger, I knew I would die for him. I don't even know this dude, but I would die for my son. The first time I see him, the first time I touch him, I would die for my son. Isn't that crazy we do that, fellas? Yeah. That's right. Because we wouldn't do that for our wives. What? Oh, I'm feeling the heat from the women. Hey, hang on, hang on. Let me explain. Ladies, hang on. Hang on. Look, ladies, the first time we see you or touch you is usually on the first date. No dude in this world is dying for you on the first date. Now, let me make you feel better about the situation. If you're on a first date and a dude looks at you and goes, I would die for you, you better run. Because that dude's about to kill you. But I would die for my wife now, 100%. It took a couple years, but we got there. That's right. If a car jumped the curb and was headed her way, I would push out of the way and take the hit myself. That's how much I love her. Because we've all dated people we wouldn't die for, right? That same car jumps the curb, you're like, shh, I guess it was their time, I guess it was their time. The Lord works in mysterious ways. I'm the type of guy, ladies, that will offer you my jacket. If it's cold outside, I will offer you my jacket. Uh, but I'm not the type of guy that uh, once you turn that down, then uh, you get cold later. <laughs> Offers off the table. You, uh, you obviously make bad decisions, and uh, we shouldn't both suffer for that. I just found out that I might need glasses uh, for reading. So I had to make the hard decision, you know, to stop reading. Uh, I got colors and shapes down, I'm pretty good. I got silhouettes made out. I knew I was getting older, by the way, when I started rooting against the kids in scary movies. Uh, remember how you watch Friday the 13th, Halloween, teenagers do something stupid or rebellious, but you still want them to make it, you want them to live. You're like, run in the barn, he's coming, run in the barn. <laughs> Now I'm like, your mom and dad told you not to leave the house. 